everyone. What a lovely day. And here is ASEAN News. Japan warns about hatred thinking if Myanmar situation doesn't improve. Japan Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi says Japan will have no choice but to rethink its Myanmar development aid if the situation in the Southeast Asian country does not improve, and he adds that private investment might also not be possible. Japan is a major donor to Myanmar, and big Japanese companies have aggressively expanded business in recent years, seeing it as the region's last major frontier market. <laughs> The Assistant Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group says Myanmar's security forces have killed more than 800 people since a wave of protest broke out after the military overthrew an elected government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st. He gave no further details, but Motegi was quoted in the Nikkei newspapers as saying that Japan was willing to cut off all aid to Myanmar even for existing projects. Japan has already halted negotiations on new aid. Japan still experiencing spike in COVID-19 cases despite intensification of measures to prevent pandemic. Japan reports more than 7,000 new COVID-19 cases for the first time since January 2001 with 14 prefectures setting new highs. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says the government is extending the state of emergency over COVID-19 in Tokyo, Osaka, Hyogo and Kyoto until the end of May while expanding it to Aichi and Fukuoka prefectures. The country imported 28 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines since February but has so far inoculated only 2.2% of its population with the remaining 24 million doses sitting in freezers. In addition, only 20% of the 4.8 million health workers in need of vaccine protection have been vaccinated. Meanwhile, more than half of new cases in Tokyo, Osaka and other places are infected with mutant variants from United Kingdom, South Africa and Brazil. Recently, many cases in Tokyo also carry the double mutated virus and the infection's route is unknown among 80% of them. The Japanese government says it will tighten restrictions on the Japanese nationals and residents arriving from India, Pakistan, Nepal. Starting mid of May 2021, passengers arriving from either of the three countries are required to stay in quarantine facilities designated by the government for six days. Residents in the capital Phnom Penh protest oppose food shortages triggered by the lockdown. Residents in Cambodia protest against food shortages sparked by an ongoing government-enforced lockdown aiming to curb coronavirus infections. At least 100 people came out to protest in a suburb of the city. Police promised food aid to the angry residents who had gathered around a police roadblock. The government closed all markets across Phnom Penh, prompting food shortages across the city. Authorities have since enlisted the help of the military to send necessary food supplies to households in areas under strict lockdown where people are forbidden from leaving their homes except for medical purposes. Some areas are still lacking. Private donors, district governments and the royal family have also stepped in to organize food drives for residents in some areas. The health ministry in a statement issue says Cambodia reported a daily record of 880 new coronavirus cases and three deaths as the country struggles to contain a wave of infections that emerged about two months ago. Thailand court gives bail to two protest leaders in prison for real in South. A court in Thailand grants bail to two leaders of anti-government protests who have spent weeks in pre-trial detention on charges of insulting the country's powerful king. The court says in a statement, the court agreed to the release of Parit Pingwing Chiwarak and Chai Morn Ami Koi Bun Pan 32 with conditions that they remain in Thailand, attend court hearings when summoned, refrain from damaging the monarchy and activities that create unrest. 
The pair have been denied bail several times on charges related to protests last year, during which taboo-breaking calls were made for reform of the monarchy. Another protest leader, Panusaya Sidijira Watanakul, who arrived at the prison gate ahead of the hearing to show support, was given bail after eight weeks in detention. She is also charged with less majesty law and took part in a hunger strike with Parid. The student-led demonstrations made once unthinkable calls for reforming Thailand's monarchy, considered by many conservatives to be sacrosanct. Malaysia launches the AstraZeneca vaccine program for people to combat COVID-19. Malaysia starts a parallel COVID-19 inoculation program for people who choose to receive AstraZeneca vaccine after it was removed from an ongoing rollout due to public fears over its safety. Though reports of possible links to very rare blood clots have dented confidence in shot in Malaysia and elsewhere, the slots of 268,000 doses are filled in just three hours after bookings. Recipient says they feel relief after receiving the first shot of the vaccine as the country faces a recent spike in coronavirus cases. Malaysia reports its first case of variant, first identified in India, which experts say may have mutations that will make it more transmissible, cause more severe disease or evade vaccine immunity. Malaysia's Health Ministry reports 3,120 new COVID-19 cases and 23 deaths. Patients are evacuated after a fire at Manila Hospital. A fire broke out at one of Manila's biggest hospitals, prompting the evacuation of dozens of patients in the government-run facility. According to hospital staff, firefighters scrambled to put out the fire at the Philippines General Hospital, which starts on the third floor shortly after midnight. No casualties have yet been reported. In addition, Philippines Vice President Lenny Robredo appealed on Twitter for big industrial fans to clear the smoke caused by the blaze. According to the hospital's website, the Philippines General Hospital is one of the largest hospitals in the Philippines with over 1,300 beds and servicing 600,000 patients annually. It is also one of the main hospitals catering to COVID-19 patients in Manila. China and Vietnam ready to work together to build strategies in the future. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China stands ready to work with Vietnam to build the two countries into a community with a shared future that bears strategic significance. He makes the remarks in a telephone conversation with the Vietnamese President Nguyen Xuong Phuc and asks the Vietnamese President to convey his sincere greetings to General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee Nguyen Phu Trong. The two sides should view and grasp the relations between the two parties and countries from a strategic and long-term perspective and set the right direction for China-Vietnam relations to move forward. The Chinese party and government firmly adhere to a friendly policy towards Vietnam and appreciate the new leadership of Vietnam continues to give top priority to relations with China in its foreign policy. The head of state adds they should also carry on the good tradition of unity and mutual support, join hands to effectively handle and control the COVID-19 pandemic and substantively protect the people's life and health. China stands ready to continue to provide as much assistance as its capacity allows for Vietnam's fight against the pandemic. At least nearly 10 people were injured in the ultramarathon accident discharged from the hospital. The Bain City's mayor at a press conference says seven of the eight injuries runners in an ultramarathon accident in the Bain City of northwest China's Gansu province have been discharged from hospital. <laughs> mayor Zhang Su Chen says 161 relatives of the 21 deceased caused by a sudden temperature plummet during the 800 km mountain marathon cross country arrived to handle the funeral affairs of the victims. 
A runner sustained injuries in the accident, while 151 of the 172 participants in the race are confirmed safe. Director of Gansu Emergency Management Department, Huang Zeyuan says, investigation is underway with relevant officials and meteorological and sport experts participating to find out the cause of the accident. South Korea promised to work with the United States to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. United States President Joe Biden and South Korean President Moon Jae-in hailed the strength of the alliance between the two countries after the strains of the Trump era during a day of talks expected to be dominated by North Korea, China and COVID-19 vaccines. The two leaders are joined by top aides in the state dining room for a broad discussion that included North Korea's nuclear weapons program. You're over time, but I enjoyed our meeting so much that we caused us to move everything back, but uh, I look forward. Moon tells Biden that South Korea will closely work with the United States to achieve complete denuclearization and establish a permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula. As we take on new challenges and we take them on together. As well as the perennial issue of the North Korean nuclear weapons, the allies will discuss regional security more broadly, cooperation in high-tech industries such as microchips, efforts to contain the coronavirus pandemic and stronger action on climate change. Moon, who under pressure at home over his COVID-19 response, will be hoping to secure an agreement with the United States for stopgap supplies of vaccines while the Biden administration is looking for enhanced climate commitments from South Korea. Moon approaches his Washington visit hoping it will provide a fresh impetus, but United States officials have played down the prospect of a dramatic fresh initiative. Aung San Suu Kyi appears in court in person for the first time since the coup after being detained four months ago. Aung San Suu Kyi's lawyer says Myanmar deposes leader Aung San Suu appears in the prison at a court hearing for the first time since her government was overthrown by the military nearly four months ago. Meanwhile, Suu Kyi's legal team had tells Reuters that she looks good in health during a 30-minute meeting with her legal team, but she had no access to newspapers during the tension and was only partially aware of what was happening outside. The ousted leader, 75, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991 for her efforts to build democracy, is among more than 4,000 people detained since February 1st coup. She faces charges that range from illegally possessing walkie-talkie radios to violating a state secrets law punishable by 14 years in prison. Myanmar has been in chaos since the army took power with daily protests, marches and strikes nationwide against the junta. The military junta has responded with lethal force, killing more than 800 people, according to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners Activist Group. <laughs> Suchi wishes people good health in her meeting with her lawyers and also made a reference to her National League for Democracy party that could be dissolved soon. In addition, media reports, Myanmar's junta appointed election commission will dissolve the NLD on the grounds that its victory in November election was secured by fraud, on quoting a commissioner. The accusations had been dismissed by the former electoral commission. The lawyer says she hears to allow defendants to meet with their lawyers. The presiding judge adjourned the session until June 7. Thank you for watching. That's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend.